Hello there, welcome back to another session on Java programming. In this session, we'll be taking a look at the primitive data types in Java. I've already posted some videos on the basics of Java, but uh, what is it I have learned is no matter how many number of years you spend on a subject, every time you look at it again, you have something new to read from it. And that's how I have learned a few new things in the last week when I was learning data types in Java again. So I just wanted to share those things with you. So we'll be looking at uh, the basic uh, primitive data types in Java. So what is the concept for today? Uh, data types, that is primitive data types in Java. So we have all these data types that is integer, short, which is a short version of integer. And we have long, which is a long version of an integer, byte. It's again, just one byte of data. And it's also an integer. Likewise, you have float, you have double, you have character, boolean. So we'll take a look at each of these data types now. What is an int? It is used for storing an integer value. And uh, the memory allocation for an int is four bytes. Likewise, when you talk about a short, it is used for storing an integer again but the memory allocation for this is two bytes. Say you want to save space while you're saving an integer and uh, you don't want four bytes, then you go in for a short. Whereas long, as the name suggests, this is going to be useful when you're going to store a very large integer. So this is again an integer, which is going to take up eight bytes of storage. Byte is again an integer. As the name suggests, it's going to take just one byte of storage. So one byte of memory allocation whenever you declare a byte. So int short long byte are actually integer type data. It varies with respect to the memory allocation. Int takes four bytes, short takes two bytes, long takes eight bytes and byte takes just one byte. When you talk about float, float is used for storing floating point uh, data. So you're going to have uh, a float taking four bytes. Say so you can store 2.345, something like that, right? Floating point data. Likewise, double is also used for storing uh, floating point data, but uh, it's going to take eight bytes. So the difference between float and double is it's a single precision floating point number that takes four bytes whereas double is a double precision floating point number that gives you more precision and it takes eight bytes. Character in Java takes two bytes. So character follows the Unicode standard here, that is encoding standard. You take every character in Java, it is represented in hexadecimal and uh, that takes actually two bytes. So character takes two bytes in Java. Boolean, Boolean takes one bit. It's not even one byte, it's just one bit. So this is with respect to the primitive data types and its memory allocation. Now we'll uh, look at the actual declaration of these data types and their default values. So let me comment this, add block comment, okay. So let's go in with the declaration of these data types, say integer. So for int, we say int first number, we can assign some values. If you don't assign some values, the default initialization for integer is a zero. Likewise, for short, you say it's a short, I'll call this second number, and that is initialized to some number here, three. And for long, so you, you have a variable name, and you can initialize it to some long variable like you can initialize it to some large integer. Here we just give some integers. And very important, you have to end this long in integer with an L. So that is a part of the syntax. When you are having a variable declared as long, you should end that with an L. See, you can also have a small L, but uh, when you have a small L, it confuses with a one, right? You get confused between a one and an L. So the convention is they give a long L. So that's how you declare int short and long. You also have byte, which takes up integer data. So byte, you can say this is the fourth number. Byte is some 
125. So all these data types are used for storing integer type data, whereas the variation occurs only with respect to the memory allocation, the number of bytes used for saving your data. Say, so what is the range of data I can store for, uh, say, for int, short, long, and byte? So here is this range. When you talk about an int, the minimum value is uh, somewhere around this minus 21474836484 and maximum value is 21474836487. So this is the range of values that you can store for an int, which takes four bytes. Whereas when you talk about a short, the value that it can take is anywhere between minus 32768 to 32767. Inclusive, it means 32767 is also included. And the default value for short is also zero. When you want to store very large integers, you go in for long and it takes eight bytes. So this is this large number starting from minus this large number to the maximum value, the positive of that. So its default value is again zero. So what do you mean by this range 32767 and uh, minus 32768? What it actually means, uh, say for instance, byte. Byte, the range is minus 128 to plus 127. So what do you mean by this range and uh, what they exactly tell you? Say for instance, byte, the value is, you can store anywhere between minus 128 to plus 127. So 127 is allowed, with, this is within the range. Whereas when you store 128, it's going to try converting it to the next data type and uh, you're going to get an error here. See, it's out of range. So what is the error here? Mm. Cannot convert from int to byte. So it's considering that to be an integer data type because it's uh, moving out of the range. So what range means here is you can store only values that fall within this range for this specific data type called a byte. Whereas for an int, you can store it between uh, the minimum and the maximum value as shown here. Likewise for uh, um, short, the range is somewhere between 32768, negative 32768 to positive 32767. So if you exceed the range, you should uh, select that specific data type for storing that specific value. I hope you were able to follow uh, the concepts on int, short, long, and byte. Now let's take a look at float. So floating point numbers, we'll be using float and uh, Float takes four bytes. Say you don't have a very large floating point number, then you can go in for a float and float. I'll call this to be fifth number. Say I give two, three, four, five, six. So now the convention is if you're going to use float, which takes four bytes, you have to give an F at the end. So that's the convention. So don't forget the F if you are going to have a float value. Say if you don't give a float value, it'll try to convert that as a double and it will give you an error. So you're seeing here, cannot convert from double to float. So it's assuming that this is a double value and uh, it cannot convert a double to float because double takes uh, eight bytes and float takes four bytes. So that is the issue. So what is that you have to do when you're uh, saving a float number, you have to mention an F at the end. Likewise, when you're having a double, you have to just give a value. It can be a very large uh, number. And there's nothing to mention. No need to give D or anything else. It's just, it's going to take it as a double value. But when you are having a float, you have to give it as an F at the end. So float takes four bytes or 32 bits. Double takes eight bytes or 64 bits. So that's how you declare a float and a double. Likewise, you also have a character, a character, you can store a character, say for instance, character K is equal to S. So you can store one character and how many bytes it takes to store one character? It takes two bytes. So we have 16 bits taking up this character. So in Java, character takes two bytes and Boolean, say the Boolean value is either, you can assign either true or false. So it can be false or it can be true. You can't assign any other value to a Boolean variable. Say we have to give a Boolean variable name. Say, let me say it's test. Boolean test is equal to true. 
You can't assign anything else. Say you can assign true or you can assign false. It just takes one bit. So that's how you declare a Boolean value. By default, the Boolean takes up false. By default, the character is assigned a null. And by default, float and double takes 0.00. .00. That's the value. And for in short and long, default is the actual uh, assignment. So everything takes by default 0. And for double also, it's 0.00, .00 .00, like that. So that is how you declare. That's how you use the primitive data types in Java. Say you're working with numbers, you know the range of that number you're going to work with. So based on that, you can use the appropriate data type. Likewise, when you're working with floating point, again, you know the kind of precision you need. And then based on that, if it's going to be very large floating point, you go with the double. Whereas a short floating point, then you go with the float with an F at the end with, for the declarations. So these are very important. When you declare a long, you should have an L at the end. When you declare a float, you should have an F at the end of the declaration or else you're going to get an issue. With that, we are coming to an end of uh, our discussion on primitive data types and Java programming. I hope that this session was uh, useful to you. If you have any questions, you can leave your comments below. We'll be continuing with more concepts on Java programming in the coming sessions. Thank you all for listening. Take care.